Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last video we talked about Unity events and the observer pattern where we have shown some simple examples but all the scripts with the methods that were called when the event happened were on the same game object. However, we got a comment from Razik Style, shout out to him, where he says he would like to see a similar video where the scripts are on different game objects. So what I will do, I will use the same scene and I will make some enemies chase the player but when he enters in rampage mode, let's call it like that, the player will fire an event causing the enemies to run in the opposite direction. Let's see how we can get this done and thanks again Razik Style for the idea. First, let's set up the way that the player will enter in rampage mode and we'll achieve this using a trigger, so let's create it. I'm going to use this shield that I have from this RPG monster asset pack, but you can use whatever you like. And we are going to add a collider to it and set it to is trigger. Remember, to activate a trigger when two objects collide, both objects need a collider and one has to be set to is trigger and at least one object needs a rigid body component which we have on the player. After that, let's create a new tag for this shield and call it Rampage. Also, don't forget to assign it and we're done with the Rampage item. Now we can create the event. Let's make a new script for the player and call it Rampage Mode. And in here, let's set the event. And as we did in the last video, we are going to use a public event action. And I noticed that in the last video, I have not explained what the event keyword does. So it essentially makes the code outside the class only be able to add or remove the delegate instances, while only allowing code within the class itself to invoke it. So basically it's protecting your code. Moving on, we also need to put the keyword static in here, which makes this event accessible from anywhere and does not require any object for access. Let's call this action entering rampage mode. Down here, let's create an onTriggerEnter function and check if the tag of the object we're colliding with is rampage. Then we will fire this entering rampage mode event and destroy the rampage item, of course. That's pretty much it for the player setup. Now let's go to the enemies. Here I have some models from the same asset pack and we are going to use the navmesh system to make them move on this scene. If you want to learn more about navmesh, we have a video on that as well if you want to check it out. Let's select the floor and add in a navmesh surface component and press bake to define the walkable area for the enemies which is highlighted with blue. And if these components don't show up for you, just go to the package manager and install the AI navigation package. After we have baked the floor, let's select all the enemies and add a navmesh agent component. Let's set their speed to 5 and create a new script for them called attack player. Open it up and for the variables we need a transform target which is going to be the player, a reference to the navmesh agent component and a bool called is player in rampage to check if the player is in rampage mode or not. Now in the start function let's get the navmesh agent component and in the update function we are going to need a vector tree direction to player which is going to be the target at position so the player's position minus the transform that position, the enemy's position, and the vector tree opposite direction, which will be the transform that position minus direction to player. Let's check if the bool is false, so the player is not in rampage mode, and if he's not, we are going to set the agent destinations to the target that position. But if the target is in rampage mode, the destinations will be the opposite direction, so they would run away. Now we need a way to get notified when the event happens and change the bool from false to true, so the enemies know when it's time to flee. Let's make a function called check if rampage, and set the bool to be the opposite of itself. So we're starting with the bool being false and when we call this function it will make it true and vice versa depending on what you want for your game. To call this function only when the rampage event happens we need to subscribe to the event in the onEnable function. Here we just have to put the name of the class where the event is and that is rampage mode dot the event name and using the plus equal syntax we can put the name of the function that we want to call when the event happens without the parentheses. Now let's also make an onDisable function where we unsubscribe from the event using the minus equal syntax so we don't uh, get errors if the object gets disabled or destroyed and it's still subscribed. That should be it. Let's save and go back in Unity and assign the player transform in the enemy scripts. And let's see what happens. As you can see they are very excited to fight me but when I enter rampage mode all the excitement has left and now they are running for their lives. Everything works as intended and using this method we avoided tight coupling so the enemies don't know about the rampage mode class, they are only getting told what to do when the event happens. So this is it, we made it to the end. I hope this video is going to help you in making the best systems out there. Again, if you have any feedback or video ideas that you want to see, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to also like and subscribe and until next time, peace.